Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today we're going to spend some time together doing a beautiful abstract organic design and entangled practice and very very colorful. So a few days ago I published a short about this beautiful colorful design and I show only details and probably a few seconds of my hands working on the design and many of you had a very positive reactions and send me feedback and questions and one follower asked me if I had a, a long version like a video tutorials about that design and so I decided to make one. Just for you to know this is a long practice just because it requires coloring and coloring takes time. Art in general takes time which is something very beautiful about art since we are always rushing right in this fast-paced society so it's really good for us to take time however I know that each one of us has a different schedules and needs and also like a different approach to the artistic project so you can use this video like you can watch it and maybe speed it up a little bit and watch it all so you have an idea of the design and you know what to do and then you will do it at your own pace and I advise you to do so if you are an intermediate advanced so you're very familiar already with Zentangle and in general with art if you are a beginner and you don't have any experience or just a little experience I suggest you instead to do the practice with me but let's say that you don't want to commit for a whole hour of practice so you can divide this video in three different sections after instructions for example today you can do instructions and all the design and you will just start the coloring then on the second time you can complete the coloring with markers and on the third time you can complete the outline with the black and a few more patterns that I will uh, add and I will show you how to add. So it's really up to you. I try to do my best to make a video that can be and give you tips and advices for you to use my videos and tutorial and accommodating them to your own to your own life, to your own need, what you need, you know, you need to do you. For this practice, uh, uh, we need a um, mix and media paper or your journal. I highly encourage you to have a journal if you're using loose pieces of paper. Make sure that the paper is small. If it's a big paper, you can cut it in half and use only half of it so you don't have to commit to something that is big and it could feel too tiring and too overwhelming. My journal is not um, very big. This is it is a square journal and actually I reframe inside the space so we work on a little smaller um, if you and keep in mind that for me at least this is what I tell to my students you finish what you start regardless the result at the end because the process is more important than the result and you keep it all nice and organized into a folder or in a nice space that you can kind of start to pile up all the practice that hopefully you will do with me or you have been doing with me already so you can see your improvement and you can compare and contrast them and you can see also your artistic personality kind of developing it's very important so pencil for drawing an eraser just in case uh, a regular black sharpie or any brand that you have available for today i will use a sharpie and an extra fine black sharpie or any brand that you have available for coloring i'm using alcohol markers shadow art markers the link is the description box you can buy them online on amazon it's not a paid partnership but i just i use those markers a lot because they are affordable in prices and still they last a very long time and i I love the color and the intensity of the ink inside so you just in case you want to provide yourself the same marker so you will have information in the description box something else I think that I told you everything and I'm gonna switch the camera so we can practice together and hopefully you will enjoy as much as I uh, usually do actually not always do when we do this colorful pattern one more thing element that we're going to focus on this practice are of course the lines that will give us biomorphic organic shapes inspired by nature colors so a very good opportunity to review the color wheel and how colors interact with each other and then the element of space how can we feel the space in a nice harmonious way uh, without symmetry because you know we have different way that we can create a harmony and balance at this time we are not going to do a symmetric design but I'm going to show you how we can create a harmonic and balance the design and we can really fulfill the space in the entangle which are very busy and sophisticated design so I'm going to switch the camera and we get ready okay 
here we are this is my journal it's almost a square i'm going to reframe it to make it a little smaller so as i told you you don't have to feel overwhelmed that this design is going to be too big now we're going to use as we say the element of lines that create shapes and colors to complete this project but we're also going to take care of the element of space right so we have a space of a specific shape and size that we want to fulfill it in a way that makes sense so it's not going to be too busy on one side and not too busy on the other side we want to make something harmonic and balanced so we want to make sure that we feel it properly so i'm going to start with this corner the left corner i'm going to set the outline for my first flower so i'm going to do a circle and then another circle around it and then we're going to set to the petals a nice tip if you are a beginner you want to make sure that you have a nice petal so what i do maybe you can do one big over here another leaving a space and make sure that they are not exactly the same they are similar in size but not like and similar but not the same shape and then we are going to place the petals behind those. In doing this, I don't do it all the time, but for beginner, this is a very nice way to create a nice flower with the right amount of petal and create a nice movement and overlapping between the petals that are on top and the petal that will be underneath. Then I'm gonna start to set the space, like the leaves around this flowers i will go pretty big since this flower is pretty big you can have fun you can do something different that i'm doing as i say you can add as i say all the time you can add details or eliminate details as you wish you need to bring your personality in it you want to make sure that also you're following like your skill level and train and support yourself a little by little without you know exaggerating then I think I'm going to create another sort of leaves because in the tango we can have fun and play with the biometric, biomorphic shapes that kind of remind us something in nature. I'm going to do like a huge sort of a drop and back and then I'm going to have fun and add the tiny little leaves which look like a drop. So they are tiny. You go up and down. You do these loops. side now i'm gonna place another flower here so we kind of have a nice uh, balance right sort of a diagonal lines and we're gonna do it a little different maybe this time for example we don't have to do the double circle we're gonna do just one and maybe we are going to do the petals maybe more petals in a slightly different shape now if you want to put the petals one next to each other this is what you will do one by one go slow follow your hands with your eyes stay focused and remember that they don't have to be perfectly identical because this is a handmade piece and when we do stuff handmade of course if we want to have a very nice craftsmanship but we want it to look natural right now we're gonna add a little pattern inside so it's gonna be fun for us to color right when you create this uh spaces and this pattern you're gonna give yourself an opportunity to use more colors and for what concerns the colors i'm using my um shadow art permanent marker you will find all the information in the description box and uh, I have a variety of green and blue, um, really yellow, everything. You use your materials and you're going to be creative, right? And uh, do what you can. So now we're going to do leaves. Maybe this time we can kind of create a nice wavy line on one side 
and a nice wavy line on the other side. Now we're gonna fulfill also this space and we're gonna have first to the center and then a nice wavy line here and then a nice wavy line over here. Then we're gonna start to fulfill also this space because in Zentangle we really want the design to be really busy and take at least between 80-90% of the space so we have a little background to color. Actually I'm gonna add the little pattern also over here on this petal. I'm creating basically a parallel line to the edge of the petal, sort of, not perfectly parallel but so it's gonna give me the opportunity to use a couple of different tones on this flower as well and maybe actually have some fun also here around the center. There we go. Now I will start it with this kind of like arches, like think about scale, scale of a fish, of a dragon or whatever, just this small arches and we double it. I'm not doing it exactly identical to the design that was really appreciated in the short, but I'm doing it very similar. So I'm recreating some of the elements that were included in that one as well. And maybe we're gonna do it a reference of this design over here as well. So we're gonna keep doing this scale as big as you need them or you want them. And we double them. Then we are going to work in this space over here. And probably I will do something like that. And then circles. Go slow with the circle if they're not a perfect circle is totally fine. You will barely notice at the end of the design once everything is colored and outlined. And adapt the size of the circle to the space that you have to fulfill with them, fulfill with it. So bigger, smaller, medium size, And probably I will add the same coming down from the bottom of our flower, doing a couple of tiny leaves and then going back, back to the flower and then we're going to do some circles as well. When you become um, very fluent in this type of design, you can also skip this passage with the pencil and you can directly do the design with a black uh, uh, Sharpie or any permanent marker that you have available. And then you will color inside. So far we take it uh, nice and slow, step by step. So pencil first. Now, I think that our design, uh, it's pretty like, uh, uh, well balanced, I see harmony. We have these two main 
um, flowers over here and then we have the rest all around. We're going to start to color now and you feel free to choose any type of colors that you would like to, any tones of green, any shade of green, and you start from any details that you want. I'm going to set the probably the different green. The more you have, the better. If you do not have so much variety in your markers, remember that even though markers don't blend exactly like a pencil or pastel will blend, right, or paint, but they still blend a little bit. So for example, you can do a yellow on top of a green to make the green lighter and brighter. You can uh, do a blue on top of a green to create a sort of turquoise. So you can be creative and see what happens. Remember also that mostly when you're starting and you're doing your first practice, if something doesn't go exactly as you wanted or exactly as my design is showing you through the video is totally fine remember that you have been committing to a pro like a process right which is way more important than the product and you're gonna make sure that uh, you focus on that so you focus more on the experience that you're getting in doing this design the fact that you were able to exercise fine motor skills, that you're learning about design and how to use a space. I'm gonna move the like uh, the paper around so whoever is looking at the video can see my hands while I color. So all my markers are about to die. They are bad, you know, but I wanna use them until the very last drop of ink. So if you see me switching the markers just because the one that I tried first. It's not working anymore. I will probably use the same bright green here inside of these leaves. A nice technique. You see I'm outlining the space that I need to color and then I color it carefully. To me this action is very relaxing so I hope that it's relaxing for you as well. leaf. I want something similar but yet to be different. Every time that you feel that you are losing attention or you kind of feel a little frustrated or you know rest for any reason just take a break you don't have to finish it in one single session you can really enjoy this and go on for a longer time you can divide this at practice and exercise in multiple sections maybe you do a design part of the coloring one time and then you can finish part of the coloring the day after make sure that you enjoy the experience the same if you're doing with your kids, of course, always encourage them to finish what they start. I feel that is something, such an important skill and life lesson to learn, to commit to something until it's all done. But you also have to, uh, you know, take care of your personal need and see. I'm going to just move slightly the camera a little bit higher. There you go. So you have a better vision, hopefully, of the whole design. Although I will still move the uh, journal around sometimes because I need to feel comfortable when I color. Outline the area that you need to color so you don't even get confused. Now we are, it's okay because we are at the beginning of the design. I'm using the larger tip. This is why you see me switching the marker. If you have dual tip marker, it's fantastic because you can use the um, smaller tip for smaller details, but then you can take advantage of the bigger tip, right? To fill the space a little faster.
as I was saying, like, you know, if you're doing this with your kids or with your grandkids or with a group of homeschool kids that you're taking care of, so just make sure that they, you define the pace, they, you let them take break and just let them focus on the quality of the process and the quality of the way that they are coloring. It's important that we learn how to fill space without leaving any gaps, just in this type of design. So you have a nice, beautiful result. Don't worry if you're going on top of the lines that we trace for the leaves, because remember that then we're going to do the black outline. And we're going to retrieve uh, and even actually uh, create a little more pattern. So everything will happen at the right time. It's just a matter of layers and steps. Now I'm gonna use this green instead to If you don't want to do your leaves green and you want to do them purple and pinkish, absolutely do so. Well, unless we are, when I'm in school, unless I'm teaching, of course, uh, a very specific technique and we're working on a very specific project that, you know, has to be more like realistic or has to interpret the realities the way we see it. And in that case, we need to kind of stick with the, col the right color palette, right? The proper color palette, because maybe we are exercising drawing from observation. So we need to make sure and I want to make sure that my students know what does that mean and how they have to report on paper what they observe with their eyes. But when we are doing something abstract and something of a different nature, when they ask me, can I do my leaves purple or can I use a pink instead of absolutely, because we want to create that personal connection with the piece, right? You can do something perfectly and execute an exercise, but if you don't like it, what you're doing, if you don't bring your personality in it, you're going to forget what you learn pretty fast. And also you're not going to feel connected and maybe you don't want to do it anymore. You know, instead we want to make sure that we fell in love with what we do. Now I'm going to start to create some nice uh, different patterns. So I'm going to use the same Sharpie that I will use actually uh, later for outlines to fulfill a couple of things that I really want black. But once again, if you want them blue, go for it. Blue or any other color. Of course, I would say blue because big favorite of mine. I'm going to create a nice, nice vermilion and dark orange. And I'm going to start it to, from this flower. So I'm going to first start it to fill the space inside. If you want to create a versa sh shade of tones of orange, and maybe you only have one, remember that you can overlap a yellow on top of it uh, and make it look like brighter and lighter. Or if you put a hot pink on top, it's going to really change a little bit and it's going to give you one more darker tone so you can play with that. Mm. 
Now in this flower, I want to have fun and I want to use the opposite. So I'm going to find a nice uh, light blue. And I am creating a, a complementary color type of palette. The blue and the orange are on the opposite side of the color wheel, therefore are called complementary. And they create a beautiful uh, visual feeling when we look at them because they are contrasting and supporting each other through the contrast. You can do something different if you want to keep your palette on the analogous side and maybe just use a red or a darker orange because you want the flower to be all warm. You can do that. Or maybe you can do one flower like this with a complementary palette and then another flower instead with all warm or all cold using colors that are analogous so they sit together in the color wheel not together sorry next to each other i love this type of practices because they actually give us the opportunity to really explore not only a variety of uh, organic abstract shapes and biomorphic shapes and see how we can fill this space with them. And so they give us freedom, right? Because we can interpret nature and interpret this different inspiration in our own way and with our own personality. But also they give us uh, an opportunity to play with the colors and learn more and more about the color wheel. I hope you like the noise of the marker scrubbing on the paper because if you don't, well, in this activity, you will hear it a lot. I personally like it and I also like the smell of the alcohol markers. I love the smell of Sharpie. For example, that each one is different. And let's move on to our big flowers over here. And let's see. I would like to use probably even a darker, darker orange for our first small pattern. And I'll do the outline so I'm not getting confused too. Sometimes after a while that you're coloring uh, this intricate design, you might get confused. So this is also why I use to outline the, the space that I have to fill with that specific color so I don't get confused. Then I will play with some magenta, hot pink. You do whatever you have available. We're gonna do a nice hot pink inside, which doesn't look that different, but 
it does a little bit there is some differences so, so let's go with the petal gonna use the big size let's see nice very hot pink doing the outlines because i don't want to feel also the last pattern that i added and now with the corner of the big tip i'm going around also here And I'm gonna switch because I think it's gonna be more precise. I know that it might take a little longer, but I prefer to be safe and don't spread the colors everywhere. I don't need to. <laughs> the fact of doing the black outline at the end, outlines at the end, is gonna also give you the opportunity to fix uh, some imperfections. For example, sometimes it might happen, mostly if you are a young artist or a beginner, that you might go a little outside of the lines, right? And the shape that you created. So the black will give you the opportunity to create maybe a thicker outline if you need to do so, to redefine that line. So this is why I leave them uh, at the end now sometimes some students ask me can i do first the black outline because i think that they help me to review the design and understand the where to color i tell them of course because each one of us has to find their own way so we have steps and i'm proposing like i am teaching you the step the the steps that work very well for me but also they are logical step to take in that order just because they're going to give you the best result however told the so remember that you need to do you so if for you the black outline helps you to see better the lines to see better the shapes and you feel more comfortable then in completing the design with colors go for it And in that case, you won't be able to fix uh, if an accident happened, but maybe because you have the black outlines, you tend to stay inside those lines better than with just the pencil. And so it might work uh, perfectly fine for you. Voila. Now, let's see if I can find the beautiful, oopsie, intense red. Hmm. This one probably is lighter. I want to have, let's try with the classic red, the one that we used for the central pattern. Let's see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, you can always overlap with the darker color. I try with one petal and then I see if I like it. Nah, I guess I like it. Look at me. I'm becoming a pro of using pink, of pink. This is actually, I don't know, it's, like, it's between like a 
a carmine red uh, and a very hot pink. It's extremely hot and bright. In the past, I would not go for those type of colors. So I'm proud of myself that I'm embracing them. Still with some type of pink, like a baby pink. Uh, I still have my issues there. Like it's not a color that I love. And I remember that when I was a kid, I never wanted to wear pink. But also I want to say that back in the day, because yes, I have to say back in the day, it was kind of a, I don't even know how to define it. It was a social custom that boy, that is like a wear blue, and light blue and girls have all pink. And so when my personality is like, it works uh, in a very particular way. So when I feel forced to do something because these are the expectation that the society and people set on me, I tend to rebel. And so I don't, I didn't like the pink because being a girl, Back in the day, everybody expected that you have to be dressed nicely, use pink, have all of your hair done. And I didn't like the fact that it was expected for me. Yeah, I know. It's like a pants and skirt, you know? Okay, now let's have some fun with these uh, sort of leaves that we created and that we're going to decide the color for the... Um, circle hmm, maybe we can introduce some more blue on a darker side yes let's remark we have some green we have a lot of warm let's kind of use some of the cold side of the color wheel i'm gonna use it for the edge of our scales don't worry if you think that they are getting confused together because remember the black outlines at the end. If you want to create a sort of a balance and harmony through color, you can report the same color also for the same design on the other side of our space. So our eyes will go side to side, ta, 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 like that. If you need to take a break, take a break, post the video if you're practicing with me and then do it at your own convenience. If you feel that feeling that you want to scribble all over, <laughs> that's the good, you know, moment for you to take a break.
going to have something that is between the cold and the warm palette, something that can reconnect a little bit of everything with maybe a nice uh, violet. If it's this one, let's see if it's not too, um, too dark, probably. Let's try this one and see how it goes. Oh, it's pretty dark, huh? a little darker than I wanted, but I don't have a, an, any lighter violet, so I guess that this will do. We can consider these two analog of color because they would sit on the same quarter of the color wheel as well. Violet is the color that link the red, which is a very warm color, and the blue, which is a very cold color. So it's going to be an interesting link in our design. Let's try the other one that I have available and see if it's maybe a little lighter. So it's still similar to that one, but not identical. And this one, in fact, is just, it is lighter and uh, warmer. So it's a closer to the red than it is to the blue. while we fill this space we can go ahead with our mind and think of what colors we could use for the circle maybe we can use a couple of colors one for the bigger circles and one for the smaller uh, smaller um, Probably in plain with some uh, green. And maybe a dark yellow or very light orange. We didn't use yellow so far. That might be something that will bring some brightness and intensity and will warm up the design. So maybe we can try and see. Okay, let's find a pretty, pretty dark yellow. And then maybe a nice uh, turquoise green, we'll see. So I'm gonna use the yellow probably for the small and medium size of circle. And then I'm gonna leave the bigger circle to another color. Try, do your experiment. If you want to follow my lead, follow my lead. Mostly if you have the same markers that I have been using in previous uh, practices. So I share the link to buy them on Amazon with you. But if you want to do something different, uh, experiment and bring your personality into this design. If I want to warm it up, actually, I'm going to go with the red. I'm going to go with a nice red. Change my mind. I want to keep it warm. If you want to go with a green or with a turquoise or sort of a blue, go for it. Red and green are opposite on the color wheel, 
which means that they are complementary colors and they create a nice visual contrast that most of the people find pleasant. Also keep in mind that when we talk about the color theory, right? So complementary analogous, pleat analogous, warm and cold, etc., etc. We are talking about a generic theory, right? That is based on collection, collecting data about colors and about feeling and emotion about colors. So it's like a part of the psychology of colors, right? Which is a sort of, a, it's a science. But that doesn't mean that the same rules can apply to everybody. because the relationship with color is also very personal. So maybe for you, might be different and you might not find in that contrast uh, so appealing uh, like other. And it's totally normal. And it is also very fascinating how our brain uh, really react to color and we feel attractions or rejection towards some colors and how those colors make us feel. I also want to add uh, over here because I'm thinking that now that it's time for us to color the background, if we have to go inside all these leaves, it's going to be maybe a little headache. So I want to kind of create a sort of a frame around So we're gonna color it inside and then we're gonna color the background. For the background, you should have also a very, very uh, neutral and light color. Let me see what can I use. I don't wanna use something that is too similar. Maybe you can use a beautiful intense green because this is still a sort of a leaf. So I'm gonna kind of fulfill with the green. Once again, I'm doing the outline first. So I am reframing the space. And then nice and patiently. definitely better because that space over here was a little empty compared to the other and we want to kind of create something balanced and harmonic so we wanted to fill the space you know pretty much equally even with different shapes so we create a balance and harmony not through symmetry but through the color palette and through the use of space there. Coloring take time and art in general, right? Take time, takes time, which is great. It's one of the gifts of art because we need to commit to give ourselves time, which is so precious because we always lack of time in the society that we built. It's so frenetic and fast paced that is so good to kind of commit to an activity that in order to be done and understood and enjoyed needs time.
done. We're almost there, friend. We have two more stuff to do. The background, which is the space left between the shade that we created and the final outlines. As I said, use something if you have like the markers that I'm using. You will have a different gray. Go with something extremely light. If you don't, you can maybe you're using Crayola markers. You can go with a peach, the, like a skin color peach, something that is as neutral as possible. So is kind of a create cohesiveness without competing with this beautiful colorful uh, design that we create i think that let's go with the gray for me i was thinking let me see let's try in a corner perfect extremely light that you will barely see it so if you go for uh a peach color because maybe you have the Crayola and that the gray is going to be too, you can still use the gray in the Crayola marker. So because as I remember, it's not too dark, but let's say that if you are afraid that that is too dark or if you're for your personal choice, you want to try and go with a light pink or peach, you will notice that it will warm up the design a little more compared to this very light cold gray, which is a really neutral color and it doesn't really create any visual contrast. It's kind of settle the design. If I remember correctly for the design that I shared in the short, I used probably a sort of a very light beige, something like that, if I remember correctly. So something that is neutral, because if you use something that is too intense or too dark or too light, you know, too bright, you're going to compete with the color palette that you already created in the design. And what is too much, it could be too much. So the feeling could be a little like confusing and overwhelming, but we want this to be nice and harmonic to look at. Nice and patiently we go. Thankfully, the background that we have to feel, it's pretty, pretty little compared to the other beautiful shape that we created together. So it should not be too much of an effort. And almost, we're almost there. So you really want to see through, right? If you need to take a moment and rest your hand, go take a moment. The advantage of using such a light and neutral color is also that if by accident you go a little bit outside of the edges or on top of some of the shapes, really, you barely see it. So it's going to allow you to go a little faster with a little more like a freedom. Sometimes the red bleeds a little bit into the gray, which I don't mind. It creates, you see, like a, a some sort of a gray pinkish, but it's okay.
actually once again when something unexpected happened i tend to embrace it because it means that it was meant to be this was the tricky part for me because we have for you if you have the same circles because we have to go around the circle so it really tasted my patience and hopefully and probably it tasted yours as well one of the another benefit of art i became a much more patient than I was before, many, many, many years before, when I didn't used to practice art so much and so intensively as I have been doing in the past 10 years or so. People might think, oh, but the gray is so light that you could let it white. No, it is different. There is much more value in a, in a you know, piece that is completely taken care of and completely tolerated in all of its parts. It's like when my kids say, oh, I'm all done. I say, now you're all done, but now you have the background to take care of. So because the background is part of your picture, right? here that I was almost about to forget. We double check and then we switch to a black marker. So first I'm gonna just go slow on top of my frame. If it doesn't like match the pencil perfectly, it's totally fine. You can double it to fix imperfection if you see, think that you need to do that. If you want to use the ruler, use the ruler. I love when the designs are not perfect. They are well crafted, but not perfect. And now we are gonna go switching to the fine markers so that will allow us, oh my, I have markers everywhere. So if you hear this noise, like it looks like a little bomb exploded on my desk because it's like markers everywhere. And now very patiently, you start to do the outlines. If you wanna leave the outline for another time because for today you are done, <laughs> this practice was long, I don't blame you. Also, with the black, the fine markers, the extra fine, we are going to add maybe some extra pattern on top of the pattern that we already created with the pencil. So we're gonna kind of make this design very nice and sophisticated because then Zentangled are busy design, they tend to be really sophisticated and sometimes they are complicated or they look complicated. But now we know that if we take some steps, we can do it. Maybe not all the Zentangled, the one that require like an advanced technique, you need to, you know, train yourself a little longer and a little more. But that doesn't mean that even if you are a beginner and if you don't have experience, you cannot create a beautiful design that look sophisticated and complicated. But in reality, you find out that it's not. It's a combination of the elements and a combination of steps to take in order to arrive to that result. Once again, what I will do, for example, I will add some lines inside the petals. This is something that you don't have to do if you don't feel like and you like your design better without. But if you want to kind of see how it works, and maybe you can try. Remember that after all, these are practices, right? They're practices that you're doing in your journal or in on paper, but hopefully you are following my advice to you know keep them together in a folder so you can do multiple practices and each time you can maybe change something. In one practice, you can do a similar 
or almost identical design and maybe change the colors to compare to different color palette or in another practice instead that you can do a similar color palette and change the design so this is like a, a journey that you're taking sometimes that you want to dedicate to yourself to learn something maybe different to what you usually do to push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone if you're not familiar with art and art practices but it's something that you know you really want to focus on the process and the practices that we are doing together leaves one and I definitely will do the pattern inside the leaves If you have a thicker marker, it's going to be fine. It's just that the visual effect is going to be a little different. But since we did a pretty big uh, shapes, it's going to look great. Now let's go to our scale one at a time inside outside inside outside so we kind of retrieve the pattern i'm gonna start to see more and more mm -hmm. although probably through the camera you cannot really see the colors exactly as i see them mostly these two like this violet and blue and even more when we do the other just stay focused inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Do one scale at a time so you don't lose control. Now, don't get frustrated if some of the circles won't become, the, the, the outlines won't be perfect. You just go, stay focused on the circle, on the movement of your hands. You do your best. Don't push too hard. Don't use too much pressure because otherwise the you will have like a sort of a grip from the paper and it won't allow you to move your hand smoothly and pretty quickly. Don't overthink it, just do it. This is a tremendous exercise for our fine model skill. So embrace it and focus on the exercise itself, not on the result. The result will come. to the one yellow and now back red slow and steady now we go carefully Down to 
to the other one. This one is longer, so I'm gonna go very carefully. And I'm sorry, it's the position of my hand doesn't let you see, but for something, I, you know, remember that I'm left handed, so sometimes I really feel that I need to put my hand um, in this weird uh, vertical way, but in order to accomplish the design that I want to accomplish, I need to be able to trace my lines comfortably. Hopefully, you all were able to see my hands on the paper very well. And so you were able to follow this design easily. I'm gonna go down, the other wavy, and now I'm gonna do also similar, but just slightly curved lines inside these leaves. Both of them, I will do the same. Hopefully you like what you see and you like what you see not on my paper, but in your paper. This was an act of love and labor because as I say, it was not an easy task. So I'm so proud of you that you decided to commit to this activity. Oopsie. You see? Oh, look, it looks like a tiny little bird. You know, when you do tiny bird in landscape, accidentally I touch the design with the marker. And now, I'm gonna move those markers away. And then I'm going to do the uh, these lines if you need to go slower go slower there my friends and this is when they say oh coloring with marker is easy well actually to color something nice and neatly you need you know fine motor skills and a lot of focus attention and dedication because it's taking a long time I'm gonna fix this line and making it a little thicker as I was saying that sometimes when it happens then the lines with the black sharpening are not as precise as the one with the pencil what we can do is just make it a little thicker and it looks something that you know completely fine so i was i'm glad that, that it happened so you can you could see the way that i solved that issues and the fix the little imperfection This is a very pretty flower. And now I'm gonna do a tiny, tiny, tiny zigzag, zigzag, zigzag all the way around the black circle. And then I'm gonna do my nice lines inside. Once again, you do them if you feel like doing it. If you want your design to be a little bit more simple and like more plain you can let in it's gonna be beautiful also if you got tired say okay i want to be done maybe you can avoid to add some details i'm in love with this design so i'm gonna dedicate all the love and the effort that i can so i'm gonna do all my tiny details that i think will make the design better
records are moving around the table. One final, I'm gonna move and turn because I feel that I need to move my hands very slow. Back and now our drops. And one final detail line and a little dot inside just to make it prettier look how pretty it is and then i promise i will stop maybe just two tiny little drops here and on the bottom And we are all done and this is our beautiful design and now I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye okay guys we did it as I told you it was a long practice but it was definitely worth it I got the opportunity to relax to reset to keep my mind occupied in something beautiful to train my fine motor skills and coordination skills and to explore and experiment with some colors so this is the design that I created and we created together. This is how I like to imagine us in a, this virtual, uh, global, online art studio where we all practice together. So let me know in your comments if you have any questions, how the experience was for you or whatever you want to share. I am really grateful for every single one of you, your appreciation, your feedback, uh, sharing your experience. It makes me really full of joy and I'm very, very happy and, uh, you know, I'm very glad to do this with you. So I'm going to see you very soon with another beautiful practice. Stay tuned. Consider to subscribe if you didn't already. Click the bell for notifications so you will be notified and make sure that you read the information in the community and in post because there are some nice news uh, and updates that I will release during the summer. Ciao a tutti!